Nicolette here. I'm a Google Workspace specialist focused on public sector. And today we will be discussing helpful Google Meet host controls. Google Meet host controls allow the host to regulate how some of the features are used during your meeting. As a meeting owner, you have more control over when folks can join your meeting or do things like block their screen sharing and text chat. Before we dive in, it's important to note that these controls are for those who create the meeting or the meeting organizer and those that the meeting organizer has assigned the co-host role. Let's review the interface of Google Meet before we go into the fun stuff of adding a co-host and setting up your meeting with breakout rooms and whiteboards. In the lower left, you have the time. You have that awesome meeting code. To the right, you can mute and unmute yourself. You can turn your camera on and off. You can add closed captioning if you want to. I'm muted right now, so I don't get this awesome echo. And um, so I'm not gonna click on closed captioning. You have the ability to raise your hand. Let's say you want to raise your hand because someone else is speaking and you don't want to interrupt them. This is a nice nudge to let people know that you have something to say. You can share your screen. So maybe you want to present your entire screen. Now, please note that this means everybody will see what's going on on your screen, whether you get a new email pop up or a chat notification. So be mindful here. You also have the option to show just a window. This is great because people won't see if you get new meeting pop ups or chat messages. It's only going to show that specific window. And a tab. This is great if you're gonna show a YouTube video or any animations. This is only gonna show a Chrome tab. Again, they won't be able to see anything else that's going on on your machine. Just to the right of that, you have that awesome skinny snowman. Here, you have a whiteboard option. So if you wanna start a whiteboarding session, a new whiteboarding session, or maybe choose one that's pre-existing from Google Drive. I'll close out of this for now. Move your gaze back to that skinny snowman. You have the option to record a meeting. Please note that not everybody will have this option. Only organizers and only organizers with a, the SKU that includes meeting recordings. Moving your gaze down a bit more. You have the change layout. Here you can decide whether you want Google Meet to automatically adjust as folks join the meeting, tiled view, that's kind of like Brady Bunch, spotlight, or that sidebar. Close out of this for now. Back in that skinny snowman, just a few more settings. You can choose full screen. Visual effects allow you to change your background. Closed captioning, the ability to dial in for phone or dial out. And lastly, you have those settings. Here's where you can set up your audio and video settings. And you have those awesome host controls. We'll come back to this in just a minute. I'll close out of this for now. All the way to the right, you have your participants. Here, I can actually select the skinny snowman and I can assign Marty as a co-host. In the lower right, you have a chat bubble where folks can chat back and forth. And then you have this square with a triangle and a circle. Here, you can create breakout rooms, polls, Q&A, recordings, and do that whiteboarding session. Let's close out of this and hop back into our host controls. The lower portion of your screen will grab that skinny snowman and we are gonna go into our settings here. On the left, we'll choose host controls. Now, by default, notice that my host controls were on. That's because I've enabled them previously. If you have not enabled co host controls in the past, these will be off by default. So it's gonna turn everything off for me. Notice these jelly beans turn off on the right side. If you wanna turn them on, click that jelly bead, everything will turn on. Now this means that folks can share their screen, they can send chat messages, they can turn their microphone on and off, and they can turn their video on and off. Let's say you don't want folks to share their screen over to the right, you're gonna turn that little jelly bean off. Same thing with chat, I don't want folks to chat, we'll toggle that little jelly bean off. Now folks can mute and unmute themselves and share their video, but nothing else. Scrolling down a little bit more here, you have quick access, notice it's on. Here, that means hosts have to join the meeting first. Only those who've been invited will be able to join without a virtual knock. And then only the host can dial out of the meeting. Lastly, and probably one of my favorite settings, is attendance tracking. 
This means that at the end of my meeting, I will get a Google Sheet with the first and last name, email address, and the duration of time that each individual was on my meeting. I'll go ahead and close out of this for now. So now that my meeting is set up, I wanna create some breakout rooms. From the meeting itself, I can create a breakout room by selecting that triangle with a square in the circle, and I can choose breakout rooms. At the top, we'll choose the pencil icon that says set up breakout rooms. Now there's only two individuals in the breakout or in this meeting, so we're not gonna have an option to create a lot of breakout rooms, but the number of breakout rooms will increase as folks join your meeting. Over to the right, you have a timer option. So let's say you want breakout rooms to be 10 minutes. This means that at 10 minutes, folks will be automatically placed back into the main call. If you had a lot of folks in your breakout rooms and you had multiple breakout sessions that you're gonna run for a meeting, you can actually choose the shuffle button. This is going to shuffle the individuals in the breakout rooms. So folks aren't meeting with the same people in every breakout room session. And lastly, you have the option to clear. This is gonna clear out all the settings so you can start over. Before we go ahead and open our rooms, also note that you can click and drag individuals to different breakout rooms. And you can click on the breakout room itself and you can name them. So maybe I wanna call this Doc's Room. When we're ready in the lower right, we'll choose Open Rooms. Your users will get a pop-up saying, hey, you wanna join that room? We'll go ahead and say join. And now you're part of a breakout room. At the top, you see how many minutes you have left in this breakout room, and you have the option to the right to leave the breakout room. You'll then be placed back in the main call. Now, as the organizer, I can see all the breakout rooms and I can join all the breakout rooms. Your individual participants, though, will only see their room and the main call. Once I'm done, I can always close the rooms, and that will force everybody back into the main call. Now let's say you wanna set up breakout rooms before you even join the meeting. I'm gonna hop back into Google Calendar here, and I'm gonna set up a meeting for next Tuesday, and I'll just call this team meeting with breakout rooms. And I'll add Marty, there we go. Now, under your Google Meet settings, you have this donut icon. If I click on the donut icon, I have the option to set up some host controls and breakout rooms prior to even starting the call. So I can get all of this set up so I don't have to worry about joining the meeting early, setting up breakout rooms, adjusting my, my host controls. I do all that during the meeting invite process. Woohoo! We just discussed a ton of host controls. Be sure to check out the description below for helpful links and step-by-step -step instructions. Have you been curious about drive shortcuts and how to best use them? In our next video, we will d dive into what drive shortcuts are, how to properly share documents to ensure access, and ways to customize your folders. Thank you for joining us today and be sure to subscribe to the Google Workspace YouTube channel for more updates.